Hi, welcome to your weekly workout. This program is designed to help people meet the physical activity guidelines of 150 minutes per week of medium to vigorous paced aerobic activity. It'll help you stay strong, feel better, and increase your overall health and endurance. As with any activity, please speak to your doctor or healthcare provider if you have any chronic medical conditions that you feel physical activity might interact with. Um, this program was created for you to be able to do in your home with little or no exercise equipment. And for this week, we're gonna be focusing on some stretching. So the exercises, uh, you will need the same equipment as last week, but for this week, you'll need a sturdy chair and a bed or a mat for the floor. My name is Ty Babb, and I'm a clinical exercise physiologist. Welcome to your weekly workout. Hi, welcome back. So I just got back from my walk today and uh, I thought about building healthy habits to keep us well and strong over the years. Uh, when people are starting an activity plan, one of the things that can kind of falter is this idea of stretching or a cool down when you're finished. If we're not doing that regularly, then um, these kind of aches and pains that we get either because we've been working out harder or age-related arthritic pain, uh, they can really kind of slow us down and stop us. And so not everybody takes the time to do the stretches that will help us feel good. And so I wanted to review those today. So the workout for this week is gonna be the same workout as last week, but I'm gonna head inside right away and I'm gonna show you the stretches that we should be doing at the end of each workout. Um, so the plan is uh, accumulate 150 minutes hopefully this week, of some kind of aerobic-based activity. So that's walking, biking, elliptical, that kind of thing. Try for 10 to 30 minutes per day, uh, medium amount of work, medium pace. Um, strength exercises, that'll be the workout from last week. You can do that between two and four times this week. And then I'm gonna show you these stretches. And so whether you're walking or you're walking and doing the strengthening stuff, you should be doing these stretches in general at the end of each workout. Aim for a medium amount of work. We've talked about that. And if you feel pain at any point, you stop. And so I'll give you some guidelines on how to do your stretches in general, and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, you're gonna need a chair and a mat or your bed for these stretches. Um, and then the strength program, again, whatever you need from last week, you'll have to do that. So, um, <clears throat> You should be able to download a handout with all of the stretches as well. Uh, and there is that optional midweek uh, virtual conference that you can be a part of by calling the Edmonton Southside Primary Care Network if you have any questions about the content that we cover here today. So I'll see you in a couple seconds. Let's head inside. Hi. This stretch is for your shoulder. So first you're gonna take one arm out in front, bring it across at shoulder height, and then you take your other hand, place it gently on your elbow and pull it a little bit further across your body. You should feel this stretching back through the backside of your shoulder a little bit. If you've got shoulder problems, then don't pull too hard on this. Um, your hand can either sit straight out like this, or if you feel more comfortable resting it on your shoulder, then that's okay. You're gonna hold this and count to about 20. Make sure you keep breathing the whole time. When you finish, you bring the other hand out in front, straight across like you're gonna hug yourself, and then pull on that elbow the other direction for the same amount of time. For a chest stretch, you're gonna to need to have a wall. Uh, essentially what you're going to end up doing is facing the wall, putting your hand at shoulder height, and then you're going to move in close to the wall. So you can see with my feet, I'm lined up straight facing the wall. Then what I want you to do is turn your feet so you're facing sideways. Your back arm should be straight at shoulder height or lower, and then you're going to turn away from that arm that's against the wall. And you should feel it pull through the front of your shoulder or your chest. You can stand and hold this position again for about 20 seconds if you're able to. Shouldn't hurt, but it should pull a bit. 
after 20 seconds, you're going to switch. And so you put the other hand shoulder height on the wall. You're going to turn your feet away and then rotate away. Twice on each side. Sometimes people don't like doing the chest stretch with their whole arms stretched out against the wall. So we'll use a, a doorway or maybe the corner of one of your walls. For this case, what you want to do is you want to put your arm out at about 90 degrees here with your elbow bent again at 90. You're going to just put that gently against the edge of the door frame, or in this case, it's the corner where the walls come together. Lean into it or move forward a bit. And then you can also try rotating away and you should get that same stretch through your shoulder here. For our side bends, you want to stand with your feet nice and sturdy. So about hip width apart or so. Uh, you can put your hands wherever you like. I tend to put mine on my hips and there's a couple of different ways you can do this. The easy straightforward way is just tipping over to one side going as far as you can comfortably so you feel it pulling a little bit. I hold it for about five seconds. I don't like holding this position for too long, but some people can hold it for up to 20. And then you would come straight up and then over to the other side. If you're looking for more of a stretch, then you're gonna bring one arm up and over while you do your side bend over. And then when you come back down, you do the same thing over on the other side. If you have any problems with bone density or uh, your back is quite sore, then you're going to want to take it easy on this one. Uh, you might do a little bit, but you don't have to go as far as you need to. For a calf stretch, you're going to need a wall or a chair. If you're using a wall, you're going to end up facing the wall. Your hands should go about shoulder height against the wall, just to make sure you're nice and balanced. You're going to place one foot forward, one foot back. Your back heel has to be flat on the ground and your back leg is nice and straight. You're not trying to push the wall over. It's just here so that you don't tip over at all. And so with your hands against the wall, you're going to bend your front knee and bring your hips forward until you start to feel it stretch through the calf muscle down there. Once you do, you hold that position for 20 seconds and then you switch. Keep the back heel down, bend the front knee and you're good. Uh, try and keep your eyes straight forward. I'm obviously looking at the camera so I can speak to you, but you want to keep your eyes forward and just relax and breathe while you hold this position two times on each side. For a seated hamstring stretch, you're going to need something to sit on. A sturdy chair, again, is a great idea. If you're picking something from your home, you need to make sure that it doesn't have any wheels, so it can't move around on you, and it shouldn't be very soft, like a cushy recliner or anything like that. It needs to have a pretty firm bottom, so a dining room chair or a folding chair like this work pretty well. Um, the way you want to set up for this exercise is your bum is going to be right on the front edge of that seat. So you've got two little bones in your bum here. We call those your sit bones or your ischial tuberosities, if you want to get techy about it. Um, so those are what need to be sitting on the front of your seat. When you're going to stick one leg straight out, your heels on the ground, and your toes should be up. So don't let it flop out. You want to have it straight up towards the ceiling if you can. I always put my hands on my bent knee for a little bit of support. You want to make sure you're sitting up tall with a straight back. Look forward and then as you lean, you're going to bring your chest forward and lean into that front straight leg and you should start to feel it pull through the back part of your upper leg. That's your hamstring muscle. You're going to hold this and count to 20. Keep breathing and relax. When you're done, you sit back up. You're going to switch legs. So the other leg is out. It's hard to see, but my toe again is pointing straight up. I balance on my bent knee, straight back, and then lean into that position. You want to do this one twice on each side for the 20 seconds. 
This is one of the two that's great for lower back relief as well as knee and hip uh, relief from stretching. We call this your lumbar stretch. This is for your lower back. When you're laying on your bed or on the floor, usually with your knees in a bent position like this, it feels better than laying with your legs straight out. So this would be our starting position. Your hands can rest comfortably. What you're trying to do is to rock your knees to one side as far as they'll go comfortably. So for me, I can get almost all the way over. For some people, they won't be able to go as far. You're gonna hold it for a count of 20 and then come back up and then do that again to the other side. While you go over to the side, you're trying to make sure that your shoulder, opposite shoulder stays on the bed or on the floor and just relax. Twice on each side is what you're aiming for. If you find that you can't hold it for 20 seconds, then you can just do a slow rock from side to side as far as you can. And that kind of tends to loosen things up in our lower back here as well. For the knee to chest, we're going to be laying with our legs straight out. If you can manage that comfortably, then what you're going to do is you're going to bring one knee up. When you grab it, you're grabbing the back behind the knee. Don't hold it on top. If you're pushing like this, it can compress the knee. And if you've got knee problems, this will hurt you a lot. Or if you have a fake knee or a total knee replacement, not a great idea. So we're going to grip it underneath like this, and then you're just pulling it as far as you can comfortably towards your chest. It'll pull through your bum and a little bit up through your back here. You're going to hold it for 20 seconds or so, and then after that you would switch and do it on the other side. If you're finding that this one is difficult for you for any number of reasons, Sometimes it's because you're laying flat like this, which puts a bit of an arch in your low back. So you can start with this position with bent knees. If that feels better on your back, then start like that. You still grab the back of your leg and then pull up on it this way. But it just means that there's not as much strain pulling through your low back. So that can be an easier way to start if you're having challenges with this one. Well, there you have it some basic stretches that you can do to help decrease any kind of soreness or any kind of age-related arthritic pain. Part of a cool down essentially is when you should be doing this. So do your stretches after your activity, not necessarily before your activity or before you're warmed up. Uh, remember, you should be trying to hold your stretch for about a minute each time that you do it. Uh, the research would show 60 seconds is ideal. Uh, and if you're not doing it for at least 10 seconds, then it's almost not worth doing. Um, I usually end up recommending uh, twice on each side for a hold of about 20 seconds each time. So that will essentially work out to a 40 second hold when you add those two 20 seconds together. Uh, for a lot of people this is long enough and it keeps enough movement going on that they're not too bored with it and it can become a regular part of their routine. Uh, so the plan for this week is get your aerobic work in. So a walk or something aerobic at a medium pace for between 10 to 30 minutes per day or longer if you want, but we're trying to get that 150 minutes per week. A strength exercise program like last week or another one if you've got a different one that you've been provided with before should be done twice, uh, between two and four times a week. And then these stretches or some other stretches that you know uh, should be done every day after activity. So that'll be your workout. Uh, remember to look for the handout uh, with these stretches and to call for that midweek virtual connection or check-in if you would like that support or if you have any questions about the content that we've covered here today. Uh, that's it for now. I'll see you next week.